Rembrandt's fur's fallen out again. Sorry, sorry. This is Collingwood's sausage dog. His whole back end's bald. I can't really deal with this right now, Because oh. she's got it into her head that it's an allergy. But if you ask me, the poor thing's clinically depressed. I said don't now! Sorry. I just need a minute to myself, so. Right. Well, you know where I am if you need me. Sounds like congratulations are in order. Well, never mind that, Jay. Where the hell have you been? I report you you're missing, for pity's sake. Missing? I, I thought you were at your mum's. More like coked off his face in a ditch. I'm sorry if I worried you. But the truth is, I checked myself into rehab. No, 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 no. You told us you were clean already. Yeah, so was that all lies? I was clean. But I knew if I stayed around here, it wouldn't last. That would only happen when I got my head straight. So what's different now? To teach you how to spot the danger signs. Avoid making the same mistakes. Wow. Sounds easy. No, actually. It was the hardest thing that I have ever done. But it was worth it. Because all that matters is me being the best dad that I can possibly be to our baby. Whoever I was before, that part of me is dead. <laughs> what am I like? I've only been here two minutes and I'm stealing your thunder. <laughs> I am really happy for you, bro. Both of you. In fact, two more bottles on me. You knew then. Didn't you, that he was missing, but you, uh, you didn't tell me? Yeah, well, I, I didn't know all the facts, so I didn't want to worry you. Mm. I didn't think you'd be that bothered. Push, that's it. In we go. You got it. Please get a pop, then. No, because then it wouldn't be able to float up to the sky, would it? I can pop Leo's. Right, because that would be really fair, wouldn't it? Has something happened? Oh, no, nothing. I think it's just a bit of um, delayed shop about Tess. Of course. You know, it was a funeral yesterday. Yeah, I read something about that. Um, Marlon, do you mind if I ask you, can I leave Leah with you just a little bit longer? I was going to see if you wanted to join us. Um, I got these for the kids. We were going to... We were going to write some messages to Tess, you know, float them up to heaven. I want to pop them. I'm not sure that's entirely entering into the spirit. <laughs> um... All right. Right back there, Colin. <clears throat> I'll give you a ring later, all right. Did Paddy like Mrs Harris? Ever since Lisa said about the divorce, something's changed. And don't say it's all in my head, because I know I'm losing you, aren't I? No, of course not. You think you've made a mistake, don't you? Nothing like that. It's worse. Worse? It's our Aaron. And his so called father. Gordon? He. did things to him when he was just a nipper. And Aaron hasn't told us all. All these years. That poor boy. He only told me a couple of days ago. I have been like a grandfather to that lad. But apparently that means nothing. You could have talked to me. Well, you know, it's dingles. But now I see that I was wrong. I thought they were my family. They are. Not any more than not. I could be dead as far as that lot care. I'm sure that's not true. Well, you know what? Stuff them. Because as of now, the only family I need is in this room. And that is enough for me. Oh. Come here. <laughs> so why lie that you were at Mum's? Why lie if you knew he wasn't? You know what these places are like. I needed to cut myself off. Look me in the eye and tell me this is the truth. I know I've got a long way to go to win your trust back. But I'm never going back to who I was. I swear. And that's good enough for me. I can't tell you how happy I am to have you back. It's good to have you on, mate. Well, this calls for another toast, I think. <laughs> well, the only people I want to toast are my brother and his soon-to-be wife. I wish you both 
the very best of luck. Looks like we'll need it. Hmm. Right. That's me. <laughs> that's you what? I'm clearing off. Just back up to the house. You don't have to go. No, no, no. You don't need me putting a dampener on things. I'll see you later. When I moved here, I put this in the loft at Zach and Lisa's and I forgot all about it. What is it? Well, it's stuff from Gordon of Aaron's. It's, well, school reports and class photos, drawings. You brought me over here for this. There is stuff in here from when Gordon attacked him. Something might prove it. What exactly am I looking for? Well, put yourself in his shoes. Little kid, scared out of his wits, going through all that on his own. Might have drawn something or written something down. No, I have to be somewhere. Oh, no, you don't. Don't what? No, as soon as things get a little bit too close for comfort, you do a runner. You think some stupid drawings are going to tell us something? Fine! Maybe it won't, but surely it's better than moping around this place, pretending it never even happened. Well, what do you want me to do, eh? Keep beating myself up for doing nothing like you have. You're right. My little boy needed me, and I just left him there. But this time, I am going to do something, even if it is completely useless. Now, you can either walk out of here or you can start helping me. Your choice. I wasn't sure if you'd still be here. I've been trying to put the pieces together. Because... You said it started when she joined Leo's school, but, you know, you've already admitted that you met her at the nightclub, so... When was it? What does it matter if it's over? You think because she's dead, that's it? I told you I'd never have left you. Am I supposed to be grateful? You were having sex with another woman behind my back. But that's OK. Because you'll come home again when your clothes need washing and when you want a little cuddle. It's not what I meant. I thought you were one of the good guys, buddy. But it turns out you're just as pathetic and cliched as the rest of them. So you better start talking. No more lies. I want to know where, when and how often. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay. Hey. Hey, look, I, I know I should have told you about Jay. It's all right. I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm just going to go and get some fresh air. What, you're going? Feels wrong. Not having Vanessa and Carly here to celebrate with us and that, so uh, I'm going to go home, see if I can drag them out. I just want to be with my mates right now. Are you sure you know what you're letting yourself in for? How do you mean? Hmm. All of this. It's a bit sudden, isn't it? Well, maybe losing Jenny made me realise that if you want something, you should grab it. And what about Layla? What do you think she wants? <laughs> me, obviously. <laughs> well, it's funny that, because from where I was sitting, she only had eyes for one person, and it wasn't you. Megan, I get that Jay hurt you, but I trust Layla. That's why I didn't tell her about Jay. You need to sort this out while you can. A marriage without trust is no marriage at all. Jay? What are you doing? Nothing. Clearing my head. All right. Well, that's what rehab was for. Yeah. Just a bit of a shock, being back here. Surrounded by all those mistakes that you were talking about. You know, I should be getting back. Are you sure that you're not jealous? You know, about me and Nick Hill getting engaged? Do you want me to be? You know, the truth is, I don't think you can stand the fact that I'm over you. Hey, look, like, me and you would never have worked. About another little thing that you learnt in rehab, is it? Some time away gives you a bit of perspective. 
You picked the right brother. He'll treat you the way I never could. I met Tess when she turned up at that club with Chloe. And what happened then, exactly? At first, I wasn't interested in her. I was too busy worrying about Aaron. In fact, I kept trying to leave. <sighs> Somebody ran off with a coat. Oh, let me guess. Good old Paddy came to the rescue. We ended up talking outside. She had this way of making me open up about stuff. What stuff? Everything. You don't realise, I didn't realise how much I was going through. She understood you, did she? You could have talked to me. She was... She was different. <sighs> so where exactly did you have this big heart-to-heart -heart, then? Car park. And that was it? You just talked? You did it there and then? With a complete stranger? No wonder you didn't want me knowing about it that night at the bonfire, because you hadn't just met her, had you? You'd already had her. What was she like, Paddy? Was she good? It wasn't like that. Ronnie, you have to understand, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Why? Because I'm so boring? No, because I was. And afterwards, I hated myself. But I just thought it was this insane thing that had happened, like a one-off. And it wasn't, was it? Because you kept going back for more. Hi, Dad. Is this free? Please. We're, um, making wedding plans. Yeah, before you start, I know you think we're making a mistake. I haven't even opened my mouth yet. Yeah, well, you don't have to. Does that mean you've set the date? The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Well, in that case, why not make it one month from today? I thought you'd hate the idea. I'm your dad. It's my job to worry about you, and it's also my job to be there if you need me. So if your hearts are really set on this, well, bring it on, I say. Dad, I can't tell you what this means. Thank you. Well, you didn't think I was just going to let anybody give you away, did you? <laughs> Well, uh, that's one down. I'm off. <sighs> Do you really want to tell her today? I rather thought we would, yes. Okay. Come on. Hello. Is this a pincer movement? <laughs> we wanted you to be one of the first to know. Ashley's making an honest woman of her again. Uh, yes, a month today, if everything goes according to plan. Well... Good for you. The number of times you two get wed, you'll be giving Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor a run for their money. <laughs> I bet get an invite. So you definitely come, then? Try keeping me away. So how did you do it? I bet you were sending each other secret little texts, weren't you? The flirty one that I found. The one about... Um, breaking the bed. She said it was for Pierce, but that was for you, wasn't it? I swear, the last thing either of us wanted was a... Go on, Paddy. Say it. An affair. Well, you did a pretty good job of it. <sighs> you let us go ahead with adopting a child. She even gave us a reference. And all the time you were doing it behind my back. I thought this was what you wanted. It was. It is. All right. So you want you to have your cake and eat it, yeah? Give the mistress one in the lunch hour and then come home to the devoted wife and kids, my God. I have been so blind. It's not your fault. Oh, really? Well, I must have been doing something wrong, Paddy, cos why else would you seek out a complete stranger for sex in a car park? It wasn't like that. Oh, I'm so sorry. What was it like, then? It wasn't just about that. Oh, my God. 
You did love her, didn't you? No. I don't know. I think you should go. No. Now! Before I do something I regret. Do you know what really hurts? It's not that you've made a laughing stock out of me. You've made a laughing stock out of our life together. And for everything we have with Leo. I'll never forgive you for that. I was just looking for you. Well, if it's about the beef and kidney cobbler, you're going to have to take that up with Victoria. <laughs> it wasn't. I just thought I should give you the heads up, as one founding member of the Ashley and Laurel Exes Club to another. OK. I literally could not be more confused than I'm at this exact moment. <laughs> Ashley and Laurel have set a date to get married. I think their view is they need to make every day count. Of course. You OK? Do you know what? I think we both knew they were always meant to be together. Yeah, they were. And if it hadn't been for us being so disastrously wrong, they'd never have realised it. <laughs> Sorry. Probably could have phrased that a bit better. What you meant to say is that everyone's got someone they're destined to be with. We just haven't found them yet. That's exactly what I meant. a little bit of extra definition on the cheeks. Prepare to be amazed. Oh. Well, you look amazing. <laughs> you know what would make you feel even younger? A cheeky little tattoo. Nothing vulgar, just something classy and discreet. Yeah, you've got to do it. No, and don't you go getting any ideas either. Yeah, you could have one of Joni's head on a spike. I reckon I've done enough point scoring for one day. Well, you're joking, aren't you? Making them suffer's the best bit. Well... I think if he doesn't love me, it's best that he's moved on. You mean that? Yeah, you could say that uh, she's done me a favour. Well, good for you. But if he can find new love, so can you. Hmm. What was that for? For staying and letting me watch Molly grow up. I can't lie, it hasn't been easy watching you fall in love again. But when I see you and Layla together, I, I couldn't be more thrilled for you both. And I know Jenny would feel exactly the same way. Where's everyone gone? Do you mind just giving me a minute? No, no, of course not. Today's all about you two. Any luck? With what? Vanessa and Carly. Oh, no, come find them. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Like what? I just wanted to add my congratulations. Jenny excluded, I couldn't think of a better mum for my Molly. You two are just perfect together. Oh, there you are. Where have you been? Aren't you going to answer? What do you mean? Exactly. Well, I saw you driving off earlier like you were fleeing the scene of the crime. That was when you were supposed to be picking up Leo. Rona was really cross with you. That's why she was so off with me. Well, I was a bit stressed. But Pearl's promised to forgive me. But you? I mean, how on earth could you forget to pick up poor Leo? Yeah, no, um, what can I say? I'm guilty as charged. Now, shall we forgive naughty Daddy Paddy? It won't ever happen again. I promise. Right. We'll go get some pasta, shall we? You sure about this? Well, it's not this all night. Yeah, it's just you said you wanted to stop in. 
Well, I reckon you were right about them cobwebs. They need a good blowout. <laughs> I could always give you a private show of your own. Huh? My baby don't care for shows. My baby don't care for clothes. What are you doing, woman? Serenading you. <laughs> My baby, he just cares for me. Am I embarrassing you? Yeah, but I've a lifetime to get over it. Oh, talk about rubbing your nose in it. Are you okay? You know what? I'm fed up with being hurt by them two. Come on. I'll treat you to a slap-up meal at the B&B. What, are you sure we can afford it? Yeah, we can. Now he's not stealing from the pot, pouring it down his neck. Well, as Kerry would say, get yourselves totally mortal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you not think we need to talk? I think I've had more than enough. So what now? Sorry? Am I supposed to pack a bag, or...? What are you talking about? I thought that's what you might have wanted me to do. You want to just wash your hands of us, is that it? No. No, that's the last thing I'd want. Good. Cos in case you've forgotten, Leo is fast asleep upstairs and we are about to adopt a little brother or sister for him. So no, Paddy, no one is packing any bags. It's not like you can leave me for a dead woman, is it? Oh, and as far as Leo and the adoption agency are concerned, you and me, stronger than ever. But the real us, that died along with Tess. Sharon gets into trouble impersonating Tracy and it's Dorian to the rescue in Birds of a Feather next. Then coming up in half an hour, it's Jericho and Johnny faces a terrible fate as the evidence against him grows. Thank you.